Hola, ¿qué tal a todos? Gracias por estar aquí. Estamos aquí para platicar sobre Drupal Console, una herramienta para Drupal 8 que se ejecuta desde la línea de comandos. Uh, what I mean, Jesus, remember, we're in Drupal Con. We need to do this session in English. Really? Just for today. People here don't understand Spanish. Almost yeah, half of the population LA speaks Spanish. I know, I know, I know, but let's do for today in, in English, just today. Okay. Hi again, everyone. Welcome and thanks for coming. We are here to talk about the Drupal Console, a Drupal CLI tool for Drupal 8. First, let's start with introduction. So, please, Eduardo. Okay, hi, my name is Eduardo Garcia, but everybody knows me as Enzo in Drupal community and open source in general. I am CTO of an SSIT, and you can find me in social networks as N Solutions, as you can see in the screen. And hello, I'm Jesus Manuel Olivas. I work as a Drupal 8 Solutions Engineer at, at FFW, and formerly known as Blink Reaction and Pro People. And uh, you can find me in any, so probably almost so, any social network like JMOLIVS, like Twitter, my user account is that. So let's start talking about what is the Drupal console. Well, the Drupal, we can define Drupal console as a suite of tools that you can run on your CLI to generate boiler, boiler co boilerplate code and interact with a Drupal 8 installation. I just want to clarify a really important point. Drupal console is not a Drupal module. Drupal console it is, it is a symphony application. Okay, this project was started in 2013, but a bit flores, and Jesus Manuel Olival present here today to um, Drupal Mexican developers. Uh, but when this project is getting more attractions, uh, right now we have a lot set of uh, developers, and now we are a team of four uh, maintainers. So Jesus, David, uh, Omar present here. And, and myself. So, if you have any doubt about this project, so th maybe this uh, this phases uh, could be, you know, provide any support uh, required for you. Okay, now let's talk about supporting organizations. I want to thank to these agencies sponsoring the project, and well, as I mentioned, FFW, the biggest agency in the world, triple agency in the world, is sponsoring me to work full time in contribution, contributing to this project. Uh, Indaba, a web developer agency from Mexico, is sponsoring the David contribution. Anexus, the oldest and biggest Drupal shop in Costa Rica, is sponsoring Ansys contribution. And probably the only guy living in the wild is Omar Aguirre, so please feel free to invite him a year or two. Or three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Drupal is, as you know, is, is more complex than other CMS, right? So, and Drupal 8 is not an exception. So, how many of you have begun to explore Drupal 8 already? Okay, how many of you feel afraid about that? Really? Okay, Come really on. positive people, I love that. So, even if you are not uh, prepared for Drupal A, if you don't feel, or if you don't try it yet, I can tell you there is a whole new set of concepts you, you have to learn in Drupal A. So, I understand managing this increasing complexity in Drupal A could be a daunting task for anyone. Are you prepared for that? Maybe, maybe not. But the idea is your Drupal console is a suite of tools uh, to try to help you to manage this complexity. So as you remember that there is a um, keynote two days before. So for us, Drupal console is just an implementation of this function, this function to try to get the best NES experience with Drupal A. So it's, it's, it's our idea, it's our, our implementation of this idea. Okay, now let's talk about how Drupal console can help you. Okay, first, Drupal console can help you generating all the required files by a Drupal 8 module. So Drupal console provides a set of commands, and for each command, you can have this, I mean, this little question that it's asking you a question. Based on that question, it generates, can generate code. But also, Drupal console can help you to interact with your system from rebuilding cache to working with man I mean, the configuration management system. You can do, like, enabling downloading modules, and we'll show you. And finally, you can also use Drupal console to learn Drupal 8, which is kind of nice. So you can in inspect the generated code while using the dash dash learning option. So we will also show you a little video about it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, change, change to the website. So 
If you are wondering where you can find this project, because as Jesus said, it's a symphony application, so just go to drupalconsult.com, and in this website you could find information about the GitHub repository, where you get support. Right now we are using Gitter, it's an instant message system, and we are trying to be available most of the out of the, t of the time, uh, we are. We also have documentation uh, written in GitBook. So again, it's a little behind, but not too behind. <laughs> so we are, we are trying to keep up to keep up that. Uh, this is also a good starting point to try to get in contact to try to contribute in this project. Okay, now let's talk about downloading the project. See, we just been talking so much. I want to start showing you some of the features. Okay. First, there, there are different ways to get a project, I mean, Drupal console on your local machine. You can use Composer, you can get download the file directly, but all recommendations for getting the project in your local machine is by using the installer. Hopefully you can see. Oh, as you can see in the video, the installer takes care of downloading all of the required files to run Drupal console on your computer. Just by running the installer, it gets a file on your local machine. It's, yeah, once you finish the installation, you can just run like PHP, console.far, the downloaded file, and you will see all of the commands, available commands listed. But if you want to have console globally accessible, you can just move the far file to a globally accessible path so you can run. So in this case, we, I mean, we are aliasing, as, aliasing, creating an alias as Drupal. And all we know, Drupal 8 is in heavy, under heavy development. And just to keep in sync with the latest changes, the easiest and recommended way to, of updating the project is by using the self-update command. So we provide with a command for you to get the latest version of the project. Okay, so it's too many talks, so you want to see something in action, right? So let's see some comments in action. So as I said at the beginning, the Drupal console started as an AES call folding uh, tool to generate code in Drupal 8, so we have a set of comments to provide this, uh, this functionality to, to generate code by, by with using the basic information. So let, let's check it out one of them. So I will show you how to generate a module. So if you are, even if you are a previous Drupal developer or not, using this command, you can generate a Drupal 8 module in less than 30 seconds. Let's, let's see a, a video. So as you, as you can see the videos, in this case, the command is using an interactive mode. So the idea is the user can provide basic information to generate a model, you know, the name, the package, uh, the Drupal version using this model, any dependency of this model, and this model. And at the end, we will get a fully functional custom Drupal 8 ready to be working in a, in a Drupal installation. So after we finish, we get a new folder with the proper files uh, necessary to enable this model. As you see, some some output code, and of course, you can use the UI in the interface to enable this model. So at the beginning, this model is this is not too functional, but we implement a hook for hell just to prove the model is is working. But as I say at the beginning, it's a starting point. <coughs> now let's talk about something more complex: how to generate forms. So what, did you, what is required to use to create generate a form in Drupal 8? You need a road, you need a fire road, you need a form definition, you need a fill definitions, and also you is required um, integration with with um, content management. Keep configuration. Uh, so yeah, configuration system. In order to save the uh, information provided by a user stored in in the system. So obviously. Here in the video, you see we have a wizard. So the idea is you just need to provide basic information about the fields, like the name, the type, and some basic information. And when you finish, the, the, the command will generate a fully functional form ready to be used and store information in, in your Drupal A. So as, uh, this, the logic is the same. So you don't need to be worried about what classes were wrote in one, anything you need to do, any YAML stuff. So just use the wizard. Uh, maybe clear cache, and your form will be really accessible um, in your system. Here is some of code generated in this in this model. Uh, and if you go, if we go now to the row system, then you you will see. I don't know that this is how the row system is generated. So if you are 
not are really <coughs> if you are not really familiar with Drupal 8, this could be, as I said before, a daunting task. So you need to learn too much stuff to try to create that. But using the console, of course, is really simple. And from customer's perspective, when they order something to us, like a, as an order, because a client order is, I really only need a simple form. But if you are learning Drupal 8, this simple form could be a week. And from the eyes of the client, could be a nonsense. But using this kind of tool in five minutes, you can get this simple form in a simple way. Okay. okay, so far we have seen the interactive mode, which is a little bit more flashy because you can see user interaction, you know, as the, I mean, the tool is asking, asking you a question, you're entering something, it looks like really nice, but so starting from this point, we will show you how to execute command passing inline, inline arguments, which is way, way more faster. So this is an example how to generate a plugin just by passing the, the I mean, the arguments and the, the, their value. So Blocks in Drupal are plugins. Pretty much every little thing in Drupal is plugged. Creating a plugin can be a little tricky because you need to add annotations. And in order to, do, I mean, in order to this block to be discoverable by the system. But you don't have to worry because Drupal console take care of adding these annotations. Now let's go to the structure page, then layout, and let's assign this block to a little region. Also, these blocks could be uh, be configurable. So they have a, a, a the yeah. same form wizard could be used to configure this block. Yeah, you can, you can add form fields to, to the block definition while generating the block. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as you can see, the block is there, fully it's, it's working. Okay, how about generating an entity content? You know, so far we show you how to create a blog, which is like one file, the form, two files, the module, all the two files. Generating an entity is is probably one of the most complex tasks, you need to create or update about 14 files. So and those files are classes, forms, route definition, menu links. Okay, so we will run a command, mm -hmm. we will generate an entity. This yeah. provided entity is fillable from the UI. Entities are plugins and required to add annotation. Same as in the blog generation, that code is, add, is added by the command. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually in this RubalCon we have a session about how to create create an uh, entity using code. So a whole session for, for do this. So uh, so you can imagine how important it is and how difficult it is. So the idea is, again, is do this as simple as possible. Yeah, the whole idea of the project is make your life easy. G generate the boring task just by running a command and then focus on adding the functionality, which is the important part of your business. OK, now. Um, before to continue, remember we just showed some couple models about the scaffolding, but when you check it out the, the project, you will find a lot of commands used to generate a uh, code. Like uh, we we can create a REST integration, a REST services, and moreover. moreover. Okay, now. With Drupal Console, we can interact with the Drupal installation. When we start this project, <coughs> as I said again, uh, Escalfolding code generator, but eventually we have we have the need to, to write some commands to interact with the Drupal installation just in order to test the code we, we were generated <laughs> is, is, is correct. Um, so we decide to create the basic information, the basic commands to interact with the Drupal installation. So the basic uh, the basic one is in, uh, interaction with configuration management. So using these commands, you can export, edit, list, modify the configuration management system. And oh, oh, another set of commands is is the debug, because you need you can get uh, some information in the system, like at the routing system, you can get a list of all routing in your system, but you can choose a specific row to get specific information about this this menu like a uh, permission with where is the class with uh, any details useful to be to to the book and there are another basic uh, models to inter uh, comments to interact with the Drupal installations yeah, you can see while we were generating services we needed to make sure those services get properly registered so we create this con container the bar command so listing all of the services basically all of the most of the commands for interacting with the system are based on commands that exist in the symphony world. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can imagine 
can you imagine some of you are thinking about to use this generated code or to learn Drupal? You know, by applying reverse engineering, and I'm gonna use this tool, generate the code, and then read the code. And you can see, and then I, I, I will find out how to learn. I mean, how to build something in Drupal 8, which is probably good, but maybe it's not good enough. It's a normal approach when you don't have documentation. So Be because you know, because the documentation is a code. Okay, but maybe sometimes it's not good enough. <laughs> okay, so for that reason, we provide you with an op with an option to generate extra information to the generated code using the dash dash learning. I mean option on the generator. The generator will not only generate code, we will code, we will also add comments describing the generated code. Think about this about think about this like the I mean the codex, I mean the commented codex examples module. But let's say we we make this tool multilingual. And we finally found a place to use the multilingual capabilities other than just I mean translating text. If you change the language here in your configuration file and you run the I mean the using the dash dash learning option the commented code will be uh, also added in the language that you say. So this, you can, we can generate all this learning capability. You can use this or take advantage of this learning capabilities in different languages. So because the idea is just to explain what logic is behind the code. So and it's, it's useful when you are starting in that. So right now, about multilingual, we have around nine language support. Yeah. The, la the, the NES will be Turkish, so this is information in, in progress. So right now we have French, Romanian, German, Spanish, English, Portuguese, Portuguese, and two more. So I don't remember what. I won't say Spanish. <laughs> Spanish is probably the, yeah. the worst one. But the Spanish was the last one. I don't, yeah. We need to it's find out someone who speaks Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. Yeah. We have mentioned how to run individuals command, which is like. Good, can help, can help you save time. But how about chaining commands, let's say? Okay, so if you're looking to automate command execution, you can use the change command we provide you. Think about, I want to generate a module, right? I want a module, I want a controller, I want a couple of forms, and you know, probably two entities. So we can do something like this. This change command reads a configuration file and executes several commands based on the sequence defined on, the, on that YAML file. And we decide to use a standard YAML file inspection, in, I mean, extension and not go with something like chain extensions mm -hmm. because we don't want to add a new Drupal listen to the project. Mm -hmm. So, so far, you can see there's no, there's no examples module. I'm going to run this configuration file that I just created here. If I run a, now there's a new directory. Let's run a tree so we can see how many files we generate at once. So generate like yeah, so how you can implement this? So you can define this in many ways. Could be a mini distribution, could be a recipe, will be something you want to automate in your servers. So because right now we are working in some uh, commands, uh, like uh, you know, thinking out of the box, because it's, it's not a simple scaffold, it's not a, sim a simple way to interact with Drupal. So the idea is we want to create the they're really tools people need in real life, right? So, and we are we are looking for feedback. Like, someone have an awesome idea, and you say, you know, my life will be really easy if we can do this. It's not like a change of value or something. So, we 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 want get this information to try to create an awesome tool. Yeah, and you can you can even mix. I mean, console command with your own commands. So you can run, I mean, generate a module, and then add some features that are really part of the core. I mean the the, the Drupal console core, but you can add your own commands. You can even like download, then run. Com I mean, call. I mean, execute something, copy files. So you I mean, you can do pretty much anything. You can mix. Then you can mix commands. Okay. So now, what about if you are a module maintainer and you you see in Drupal console is an is an awesome tool. So obviously, it has, as Jesus says, maybe you don't want to share your custom logic. Because maybe it's a custom model model for your client, but you are still you want to get advantage of this uh, this Drupal console feature, so you can create an integration. So, what is the easy way to write an integration? Well, we have a command to generate a command to be included in your custom model. So, if you don't want you you don't need to share, but at, le at least you have the old boilerplate code to generate your command. So, when you enable your custom model and you list the commands available in the console, voila, your custom model will be available only for you and will be your secret. And then you just start, uh, you know, including your, your business logic itself. And this is how you execute uh, a specific uh, 
Drupal, Drupal command. So you generate, generate command, then the new command is here. And as you can see, this is the code on it. And this command, it's automatically registered and recognized by console. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do anything other than just, you can just run the, com the new command. So this is example, mm -hmm. colon hello. And and it's, it's available immediately. Yeah, so you don't need to be worried about the magic. How these guys include this in the console? It's there. It's just to use. So now, what maybe you could think what crazy things I can do with this integration? Let's talk about this awesome project. Um, maybe if, if you are familiar with Symfony, you know this bar from Symfony. Its profiler is awesome to improve the performance in the websites. So this guy create a poor. In the same way, we we use the the console component from Symfony to create these tools. He used the web profiler component in Symfony to include in Drupal. And, but these guys create, uh, was thinking really beyond uh, us. So suddenly we just received an email to say, hey guys, I wrote an integration uh, f uh, for web profiler with the console. Show the videos. And he wrote that and, uh, and a command to enable to run benchmarks and gain Drupal 8 installation just to check it out the performance. So uh, users use the Drupal installations and then he get information about this. Yeah, the, the web profiler is a tool that lets you analyze the request response lifecycle. Mm -hmm. So anything happening in your system since a user requests a page, um, I mean from there t until you re return something, will be stored. So you can, you can take advantage of this tool to debug your system. So this is an awesome project. It's also coming from the Symfony world. There's an awesome developer that already built, I mean, put it to Drupal. So let's go ahead and use it. I highly recommend you to use this tool. It tells you how many queries you executed, how many forms are loaded, how many uh, blocks are loaded. But if you, if you are a admin, the, the, the UI is not your thing, it's not your cup of tea, and then you want to, to check it out this using the common line. And then you get the information for the profile and then you, you decide, okay, let's run a benchmark. And then how many runs you want? You create this and then you get some statistics, statistics about that. So this is what I say before, the sky is your, is your limits. So you don't, you don't need to think about only to modify a value, to generate this code, so you can generate a really, really a specific and a special tool for yourself. Okay, now that Enzo mentioned it, how to create it, I mean, Talking about integration, I really like to, call, to talk about contributions, okay? Anyone can contribute to this project. We invite you to contribute to this project. You can add new features. You can grant an integration in your custom module. You can improve translations or help, help with the documentation. But first, you need to get the code, right? So getting the code, this project code is easy as following three steps. We have the code in GitHub, so you need to fork the project. Then you need to clone the fork in your local machine and then use Composer to get in all of the dependencies. And we have this project at GitHub. We are syncing the project on Drupal.org, but we have it in GitHub because when we start the project, most of the people helping us with the project were, were from the Symfony world, so we don't want them to, like force them to have a user account and to, to be able to help, so we have the project in both places. And at the beginning we were like accepting pull requests and then patches, but we decided to go one way, so we kind of move everything to GitHub. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our version because we are in LA. This is our version of Hall of Fame. Um, this is um, without these people, we will not be here doing this conference today. So please, if you recognize your face or your icon, please uh, stand up. Okay, we meet there. There's also Greg. This is not totally updated. Greg also helped us. Uh -huh. I mean, if you see your okay. face. Yeah, this is all. So we want to thank you. Okay, so, uh, no, no, the, la the last one. So, maybe if you are wondering where are they from, so you should check out this map. So, I this map. So, basically, this is a Latin American project, and we feel really proud about this because this is a proof in Latin America we can create technology to be used around the world. Because usually we are technology consumers, and sometimes we don't believe really in ourselves. So, this is a way to say to our you know, to peers in Latin America, say, hey guys, so be, be proud about what you know and be brave to try to build something uh, in a region, it's possible. Um, so, but of course, so if you get your help, we, we can create a better project every day. Okay, and talking about help, 
We need all the help we can get. You know, please use the project, love it or hate it. Let us know. More How love, can you? Please. Huh? More love. Yeah, more love. That's fine. We ever see them hate here and there, but that's totally fine. Okay. Talking about helping us, how can you, you might be wondering how to help. You can provide feedback just by using the project. You can maybe asking for a new feature. I mean, maybe you have an idea of something really cool. You can just create an issue and we can discuss about it and just, just I mean, and take actions. And also you can, well, create issues or we, I mean, we accept pull requests. And you, we can, you can also help just talking, spreading, spreading the word and love, you know, talking, talking about the project, tweeting about it. And uh, probably showing your Drupal constant stickers. So pingos for stickers. We have it here when the session ends. So. Yeah, we call it Drupal prompt. Okay, now let's talk about the roadmap. Okay, we show you. I mean, I mean, so, some features of the project. Some features of the project. Now we want to talk about what's. I mean, what features are planned for future development. First, we want to really, really want to increase code coverage. We know we're doing terrible in that section, so we are. We'll fix that. We know we need to improve the documentation and translation. You know, Spanish section is all, all bad. We want to improve the verbose code output. Remember the learning dash dash learning option we provide you. We want we would really want to ask people to I mean tell us which gener which generators you think I mean will be I mean nice to have this feature, and we really want to hear from you. We went we we're also planning to. Well, this is partially covered, so we'll talk about it in the next slide. We're planning to add dummy content generation, something like, you know, content station, same as like importing and export configuration, but for content. Uh, we, okay, ready to the content generation, we are planning to use probably Faker library, which is an awesome external project, or probably using, there is already a module, like default content module, it's in GitHub, take a look at it. And what else? Oh, sorry about that. And well, at this point, you might be worrying about, you know, this tool looks like something that I'm used to do a lot. You know, remember how this is pretty cool? Uh, I guess it's trash. Yeah, I okay. get it. You get it, yeah? So uh -huh. you don't have to worry about it. So we want to invite Greg Anderson from Pantheon, a Drudge commentator. He will explain to you what you don't have to worry about. So, you know, resistance is futile. Thanks for the welcome, everyone. Um, I'm not actually here to tell you about all of the solutions. I'm just here to tell you about um, the continuing development, a little bit of history about what's going on. So as Jesus mentioned, there are some people who are confused. It's like, you know, what's Drush and what's Drupal console? And Drupal console uses the Symphony console component and Drush doesn't. And does that mean that the Drush maintainers don't like Symphony console component? Well, actually, um, we've had the desire and an issue in the queue to use the Symphony console component since before the Drupal console project even started. But Drush has a really large responsibility in the community. You know, we like to work stably across a lot of versions of Drupal and it's heavily used in a lot of different ways. Um, so backwards compatibility is really important to us. Probably, you know, even more so than Drupal core, which is not so concerned with backwards compatibility most of the time. Um, so, you know, maintaining that backwards compatibility and having the time to do everything, you know, that, that issue just wasn't getting any traction. And so I think that's one of the best things about the Drupal console project is just by focusing and saying, you know, we're going to make a tool, it's based on Symphony console, it's going to do cool things with Drupal 8. You know, they were able to make a lot of progress that, you know, we never really could have done by trying to do this in Drush first. Um, but now, you know, as Jesus recently demonstrated, Drupal console is starting to integrate with Drupal and call into Drupal, and now we're getting into some areas of overlap between console and Drupal. And one thing we spend a lot of time on in the Drush queue is just issues. It's like, hey, Drupal changed. Drush doesn't bootstrap anymore because bootstrap is now different, and so we have to go and fix that. And you know, when something like that happens and you have multiple pieces of code that are bootstrapping Drupal, then that's multiple bits of work that you have to do and it's not desirable. So a couple weeks ago, Jesus came down to the San Francisco offices of Pantheon and we spent about a day and a half just you know, analyzing how console works and how Drush works and what the commonality is with the, the Drupal 8 bootstrap code. And uh, 
we put a bunch of code into console to make it bootstrap more like Drush. And then we did this cool experiment. There it is down on the bottom. There's a URL. We've got a wonderful issue in the Drush issue queue, and it's the best issue ever because it's issue 1337. It's the lead issue that integrates Drush and Drupal console together. And in this issue, we just have the, a little experiment where Drush starts to bootstrap Drupal 8 and it says, oh, hey, wait, I can find Drupal console here. So it doesn't call its own Drupal bootstrap. It calls, calls the modified bootstrap we put into console. And then it asks console, what are all of your commands? And it adds them to Drush's command list. So um, you know, with this issue applied, you can actually use a Drush site alias to target a remote Drupal 8 site and run a console command on it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> So that was only a day and a half, and although it works, it's not really there. There's still a lot of decisions we have to make, a lot of co conversations we have to have. Um, this work's going to be continuing. In fact, tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m. in room 408, Hackerville, just down the hall, that way, mm -hmm. <laughs> that way, <laughs> we're going to be uh, doing some sprinting on Drush and Console and see how much more progress we can make and how many more decisions we can make about how this should really work as these things move together. Because you know, we'd really like to see standard Symfony components also being at the core of Drush, which will involve some modernization and changing in Drush, which happens a little slower. But you know, we're working on it. And if any of you want to come and join us there, we'd love to see your smiling faces. I just want to thank, thank you, thank you, Greg, for I mean, helping us with explanation, for I mean, this day and how it's been working together. It was awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I also want to like to invite you to try or test this PR and or comment on the issue. Okay. Then we'll see that. I think we're all done, right? Mm -hmm. So, but one more thing. So before to grow up, I we would like to talk about some ideas we have um, for the future. So. What about that GUI for CLI? Because, you know, not everybody likes the command line. Really? So, yeah, I don't know why, but. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is the kind of people out there. I don't know why. So, the idea is we already bought this, this domain, DrupalGenerator.com. So the idea is we are building this, this GUI to, in order to enable users to it's accused the commands using in, uh, we have in, in CLI to, gener to, to generate the code we say at the beginning. So in that way, the, u the user just provide the auctions and get that seed file with the model or with the REST service or whatever they want. It's, it's just another way to help people to get in in Drupal 8 in an in a easy way. So when, when they will we be ready? Uh, when, when Drupal 8 is ready, so okay, we will so know. No more than that. So okay, that's fine. So basically, it's let you like I want to generate a module through controllers, I mean a couple of entities. Mm -hmm. I want a form. I want to have two services here. You can even create services that connect inside the controllers, and basically it give you a file. Okay. Basically, so this project it's it will be a Silex site. The generate basically this is it will be easy. Something like you generate a change YAML file and run console. Yeah, so far as you can imagine, because we have a lot of stuff in our plate, not only for the Drupal consoles, also with these tools, we are looking support for people to try to get help us with this, so this, this kind of project. Yeah, this tool so is basically, I mean, we'll be, we're planning to this, make this, we want to make this tool, our goal is make this tool, I mean, easy to use. If you don't really love the CLI, I have no idea why. You can, or you might be a site builder, mm -hmm. just jumping to here, well, not, not yet. You won't see. You won't see nothing at this point. But probably mm -hmm. Barcelona. Yeah, could be. So because we all know Drupal would read for Barcelona, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. So, so maybe in summary, you can you can imagine of we are worried about time of implementation of Drupal 8. So maybe if you are a business owner, maybe you are money oriented, and you would need to spend a lot, a lot of time to get people involved with Drupal 8. And money is time. So the idea is, is if you help us with this 
kind of project, so will be a benefit for your company, and of course will be a benefit for for the community. Well, maybe you just want to learn Drupal. Just jump into here, mm -hmm. generate some a few few components, mm -hmm. enable the learning the learning option, and boom, your code has commented. This, I mean, all of these comments in multilingual. But I mean, you can have it in Spanish, English, just based on many languages that we mm -hmm. have, and you can you can use this tool for learning Drupal. So I think that's all we have. Also feel free to stalk us and ping. I mean, I mean, ask us any question or ping us at and solutions J M O L I V A S or Drupal Console. Yeah. And I don't have their join ID. So you can use this uh, hashtag or you can use the uh, the Twitter yeah, yeah. account to provide any feedback recommendations, right? Uh, and we will try to respond to that. So yeah. So uh, as Jesus says, we are using many technologies. So don't worry if you are not a Drupal eight developer. Uh, but if you un un understand Twig, you can help us to create templates. Yeah, basically, basically the tool is some is used, is this tool is taking advantage of Symfony console component to the interaction part and using Twig for rendering code. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, any questions? Feel free to take the the mic. Mm -hmm. and and muchas gracias. gracias. You, you can do the question in Spanish. Uh, but the, the question must to be in Spanish. Hi. Uh, the question uh, must be in Spanish. Okay. <laughs> si puedo. <laughs> uh, okay. My, my question is, uh, when, when you generate the form and it's uh, able just to take data out of uh, the form, is there a out-of-the-box uh, the integration done with the views? No, w forms store data on the configuration system. It's not, it's not like... It's not, not like entity fields, it's like form fields. It's the form, basically the form API. The entity generation, it gen it's a fieldable, and the entity we generate, I mean, are, I say, I fieldable, so you can add fields, and you can use this, I mean, then you can use it, use those entities with views. Would, would it be possible just to kind of, uh, as, as you mentioned, like, a, it's a simple form, but you want to, like, for a contact list or something like that, something that is really quick to put together, but then, you will want to retrieve the data out of the... Yeah. So the, the current command the doesn't entries. support that, but as I said before, so if you create an example in code and, the, and you think this is something useful, you can create a pull request and then we will include a new command to tackle this specific necessity. So this is the kind of needs. We need, we need some support and feedback. So if you have the idea, the idea is, is okay, but if you, if you want to go more of that, just create a, a, a snip of code Submit to us, and then we will transform, um, and we will be able to provide this new feature in the next version. Or oh, why don't we use cron integration to, I mean, entity form module? module. Yeah, right. We can add a command inside an entity uh -huh. form module, generate it there, and that module uh, module already provide that functionality you're asking for. All right, thank you. Uh, the, the model is ours. I mean, the the project uh, as it is is ours. Thank you. Cool. cool. Oh, thank you. So. Again, there's no more questions. Thank you again for coming. There's another, another more. Okay. No? Uh, yes, no? Another, another we have stickers here, so feel free. Ah, uh, yeah. Again? Yes. Hola, gracias. Uh, how do you update core in Drupal console? We did, no, no, we don't have a way. No, we don't have any, like an update thing, not yet. I mean, yeah. Drush already provide that. So. Yeah, okay. So w this is not part of the project. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can update the module. I mean the console project just by using the self update, but no, not core. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think. Okay. So remember a sticker are here if you want one. It's the Drew prompt. Uh, okay, enjoy. Thank you awesome. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.